Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These books, these videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding or KTUs. This will end with the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are only three keys to understanding. The first KTU says degrees of freedom, which is symbolized by DF or the Greek letter nu, is a way of adjusting for the additional error that is introduced when one statistic is used to calculate another. KTU number two says the effect of the error adjustment gets smaller for larger sample sizes. The third and final key says the individual members of some families of distributions are specified by their degrees of freedom. And here on one page are the three keys to understanding the concept of degrees of freedom. You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to read them all together. Okay, now let's go into more detail on each of these keys to understanding. KTU number one tells us that degrees of freedom, symbol DF or the Greek letter nu, is a way of adjusting for the additional error which is introduced when one statistic is used to calculate another. A statistic is a numerical property of a sample, for example, the sample mean or the sample standard deviation. A statistic is an estimate of the corresponding property in the population or process from which the sample was drawn. A parameter is the word we use as the value of the, of the property for the whole population or process. For example, if we took a sample of 100 registered voters in a town of 10,000 voters, and we asked the 100 whether they favored candidate A or candidate B, we may find that 55 of them planned to vote for candidate A. After the election, we found out that from the total population, 5,200 actually voted for candidate A. This would be a difference of 300 votes between the sample and the population numbers. A difference of 300 votes would be 3%. This would be the so-called error involved in using sample number rather than the numbers from the full population. Being an estimate, it will likely not have the same value as a corresponding population error. The difference is the error in the estimation. Now, error is an unfortunate choice of terminology because no mistake has been made. Just practical limitations of our survey forced us to survey a sample rather than the entire population. <clears throat> Example sample mean. The sample mean is calculated entirely from the values of the sample data. It is the sum of the data values of the sample divided by the number n of items in a the sample. There is one source of error in its formula the fact that it is an estimate because it does not use all the data in the population or process. So if we then use that statistic to calculate another statistic, it brings its own estimation error into the calculation of the second statistic. This error is in addition to the second statistic's estimation error. Uh, and this is what happens in the case of the sample variance. So the sample variance has two sources of error. It is an estimate from sample data and there is also the estimation error from the sample mean, which goes into the calculation of the variance. It would be good to somehow distinguish between the effects of one source of error from the mean and the two sources of error for the variance. The degrees of freedom is intended to adjust for the additional error which is introduced when one statistic is used to calculate another. We don't need to make this adjustment for the sample mean, but we do need to do it for the sample variance we divide by n by one, n minus one instead of n. 
Now, the following is an alternative description of the concept of degrees of freedom. You can feel free to skip this slide if you're comfortable with your understanding at this point. Another way that degrees of freedom is described as the number of independent pieces of information that go into the calculation of a statistic. To illustrate, let's say we have a sample of n equals 5 data values, and these values are the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. When we calculate the sample mean, we have five independent pieces of information, which is the five values of the data. They are independent because none of the values are dependent on the values of another. So for the mean of df equals 5, we have the sample mean equals 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 divided by 5 equals 30 divided by 5 equals 6. But when we calculate the sample variance, we use the mean as well as the five data values. The mean is not an independent piece of information because it is dependent on the other five values, which we're using again. Also, when we include the mean, we only have four independent pieces of information left. If we know that the mean is 30 and we have data values 2, 4, 6, and 8, then we can calculate that the last data value has to be 10. So 10 no longer brings independent information to the table. Key to understanding number two says, the effect of the error adjustment gets smaller for larger sample sizes. The adjustment is applied because using sample data will never be as accurate as using all the population or process data would be, if that were possible and practical. However, using a larger sample will always have less inherent error than using a smaller sample. For large values of n, the difference between n and n minus 1 can be negligible. As we see here, the difference is 10% for a sample of 10, but for a sample of 100, the percent adjustment is only 1%. KTU number three says the individual members of some families of distributions are specified by their degrees of freedom. The test statistic Z has only one probability distribution, and that is the standard normal distribution. But the probabilities for other statistics like TEF and chi-square are described by families of distributions. The individual members of these families are defined by their degrees of freedom. For example, pictured below are three members of the chi-square family of distributions. The shaded area represents alpha equals 5%, and the numbers below the horizontal axis represent the critical value of chi-square for alpha equals 5%. For small values of degrees of freedom, the bulk of the chi-square distribution is on the left, close to zero, with the tail skewed to the right. As df increases, the bulk moves to the right and the shape becomes more symmetrical. And the critical value, which is the boundary of the 5% shaded area under the curve, is a larger number. Now, the F statistic is the ratio of the variances of two samples. The sample sizes N1 and N2 can be different. The two degrees of freedom for the two samples are required to specify an individual F distribution. The shape of these distributions are similar to those of chi-square, and they go through similar changes as the degrees of freedom increase. The shape of the distribution of the t-test statistic is the same as the familiar bell-shaped curve of the normal distribution for the z-test statistic. For smaller values of degrees of freedom, the t-distribution is wider than the normal distribution, and as df increases, the shape narrows, and the difference between the two shapes becomes progressively smaller. There are individual articles in my book on each of these distributions. I also have uploaded YouTube videos on each. This table provides the formulas for calculating the degrees of freedom for the most common distributions and test statistics. You may wish to pause the video at this point and take a look. Okay, that's it for this video on degrees of freedom. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos I wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, my website, statisticsamazz.com, has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. 
You can also learn more about those on the website. Uh, you might also take a look at my blog at statisticsfromazcom slash blog. And also, I'll be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.